Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we are going to do the Loom Knit Stocking. I designed this back in 2009, 2010 when I first started the Crochet Crowd. We actually had a tutorial and it's probably the most requested tutorial to bring back in time. However, because I got my feelings hurt because I was so new to YouTube, I actually deleted the videos because I didn't realize how raw YouTube can be with the comments. Well it's now 2020 and I realize not to take those comments personally so much so now I'm going to refilm this. So what this is, is it's actually a luminous stocking using the smallest ring of a kit and it's about a five inch ring and we are going to be making this from head to toe. I am going to be using Bernat Pip Squeak double stranding. So two strands at one time for the fluff at the top and then I'm gonna be using Bernat Blanket itself and it's race car red for that. I'm not gonna change the color on the uh, heels but you can do that. I'll explain that when I get there and so we're gonna start off with the cuff, work our way down. You will need a tape measure for sure and you can count the number of rows or even the uh, you know go ahead on your own. So without further ado we're going to load up our loom knit tool. It's just an empty pen and let's explain a little bit more of that in just a second. As we begin to work on our loom project today you can actually make this with a larger size ring like the baby hat size if you wish. You can just substitute some information and just customize it for your own self as well. So originally when I did it I just did a small ring. So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to load two strands. So I have two separate balls off camera that you cannot see and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just take this wire right and I'm going to feed it through the tool. So this is where it's gonna go down and it goes almost down between the pegs. It's pretty small the distance in between. So getting an average size pen through there is kind of hard. So I'm going to just take the wire and just feed it through like this and then I'm going to pull this through the tool. And so I will be drawing on the yarn with this tool it's, and it's just an empty pen. So that's our starting point and we will be using that later with the burnout blanket as well. But for now we have to get started like this. So let's load our loom. To begin we're gonna use the two strands and create a slip knot. I'm gonna pretend you don't know how to do a slip knot. So just point your finger, the both strands are together, just pretend they're one and wrap it around your finger twice like this. And then I want you to pinch it like that. So just point and then pinch. You're gonna take this section, this back one and leapfrog it over the first one but don't go over top of your finger and now grab the new back one and go over top of your finger like that and that's your slip knot to start. So watch. So you're gonna go over, play leapfrog, goes over and then the back one is gonna leapfrog over but go right up over top of the finger and there is the beginning slip knot that you're gonna do. Now if you're right handed you're gonna wanna go to the left. If you're left handed you're gonna wanna go to the right. It doesn't really matter which way to go to be honest with you. It's all depending on your comfort. So using the knot favor the inside of the loom. I know white on white is hard to see and just kinda pull it on to the peg but don't put it on to the point that you can't get it off later and let the straggler just fall out in the middle. The straggler will go inside of the brim later so you don't gotta worry about that so much. So what we have to do is that it's called e-wrapping. So just pick up your loom and circle around. So I am right handed so I'm going to the left and circle and go around your pegs. And you're gonna go all the way around using this formation. The less tension you have coming from the ball the easier this is to work with. If you can get a pen that can go deeper down into the pegs you're laughing. But for me this is what I found. Okay so I'm gonna go all the way around and then I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I paused there for a second because the ball or the yarn was snagging coming out of the ball. So you want it coming out of the ball nice and easy. So now I've just gone all the way around. So because this pen cannot sink any further I just have to go around and just push these about halfway down or close to the bottom. So do that all the way around and if you just use several fingers you can just push it all down and so you just want these to be underneath. So as we begin, okay, so as we begin we want to wrap again. So starting on the next peg and wrap one more time. Stay towards the top of the peg this time and just continue to wrap. This would be technically classified as round number two to be honest with you. Okay, so just wrap all the way around and meet me back here in just a moment. 
So I'm coming all the way around and when I wrap around the last one, wrap around and stay towards the outside of the loom. Now some people messaged me and they said they don't like my method of turning up the loom upside down. It's just a suggestion. It's up to you and how you do it. So you have to take the bottom one and pass it over top of this one and the peg at the same time and go over. For myself what I do is I turn it over. I find with the weight of my arm because I am an overweight person is that the weight of my arm assists me in order to get all the way around. So I just have to wrap this next one. Okay, so I use the weight of my arm in order to kind of pull. So I'm gonna go over top of the one that's closest to the ring section here and then I'm just gonna pull it over. The first one is gonna be tough and you wanna pull those two strands over. So just be careful to make sure it's only those two strands. And then using your thumb push it almost three quarters the way down. Once you've done the last one that you've just did there it will not unravel. So now can progressively just go around and so you'll notice the rest are easier. So what I do is I pull over and then turn this so it goes sideways and then use your thumb and push. And you're gonna go all the way around. This is knitting at its very best. And you'll see that everything is gonna grow to the inside and fall to the inside of the loom. So maybe back here after you have this full round knit. So I've now come all the way around and when I finish I wanna finish so that this has all these already pushed down. So moving the uh, the tool back into place just tighten it back up a little bit and then starting on the next peg begin to wrap around once again. So this is another round. So all we're doing for this particular project is that we're just wrapping in circles like this. It's called E wrapping because you're actually drawing the letter E onto the peg. So you're gonna go all the way around in this motion and then we're gonna show you how to knit once again and then I'm gonna give you some instructions and then you're going to do the brim of the or the cuff uh, basically of this loom knit stocking. I've come all the way back around and I'm just going to knit the last one that is wrapped so it doesn't unravel. You'll find out really quickly if you don't do it and then push. Then you can just release this and let this go and then you're gonna knit. So what I would like you to do, this is considered the actual, you can actually feel the number of rounds that it is. So this would be considered number three and I need you to do 30 rounds itself. So on a script pair, <laughs> on a spare piece of paper write the numbers one through 30 and then check it off as you go and I need you to do 30 rounds now of doing this. And then I'll meet you back here and I'll show you how to form the rim which is actually permanently into position on your stocking. So I'll see you back here in just a few moments. So here's a little loom knitting tip for you. So my tool does not fit in between the pegs so it's kind of a pain. So when I started this tutorial earlier with the stocking then I noticed that my pen fractured and so then the yarn started going in between the fraction and broke it. So that's something that I had to figure out. So because it cannot go in between it's really kind of a pain. So especially when you start wrapping it like this. So what I'm doing is that I'm using my finger and just holding it for a second and then releasing. So just hold and releasing like this. And so it gets a lot easier to be able to do if you do it like that. So just use your finger and just kind of push it. So it's, you gotta use two fingers at this point. So I just put it on my lap and I just rotate it around or you can do a table just like this. It's up to you. So it's a little tip uh, just in case your pen doesn't work so well. Just use your other hand. Just stabilize it and then knit as you normally would. So I'm officially going to stop on round number 25. Originally I said 30 but the fact is is that I've learned a lot since 2009, 2010. So I think the cuff is long enough. So this is not the entire cuff. So what we're going to do is that we're going to fold this in half and then insert the back end here on top of here. So what I'm going to demonstrate next is actually how to do the brim which is either for a hat or the cuff and then we're going to be introducing another color. So we're gonna be changing out this color at the same time. So let's begin. So to change the color at the brim I want to take this off of the, the strand here. So take it off and just leave it sit. Now I'm going to just make sure that this last one that has been here I'm just gonna make sure that it does a tie and I'm gonna tie it to the loom itself. And when I go to tie this I don't wanna tie this to the point that I can't get it off. So just enough that it's kinda got that extra loop in there and so when we go to use this it's gonna be kinda hidden and then I'm going to then trim this piece out just a little bit shorter. This will be inside the brim. I'm then going to reach through and I'm going to grab the piece here 
Okay, and I want to grab the very end. So I'm looking for, I changed the, here when I broke my, uh, my sticky thing. So this is where I started. This is the slip knot. So we know that we started here. So the slip knot here, I'm going to just push it partially the way down and put that slip knot section on top of the loom. You can use your tool for that as well if you wish. I just push it down. So you're getting the two strands that are on the end. Once you get the first two, the rest of it will fall in line. So now that it's on, I'm now going to just push it down. So using your tool, you'll find the next two. It's two strands because you double stranded. So you're just gonna put the next two strands over top and then you'll find the next two and etc. And you'll rotate all the way around using this. When you get back around, I want to be able to tuck this inside of the brim as well. I know white on the white is hard to see. Now in this instance, I am going to switch to Bernat Blanket. It's already double the thickness, so I don't need to double strand it. And I want to create a slip knot. So I've already shown you how to do that. So create that. Don't have too long of a tail. Just long enough that you can pretty much secure that it won't fall out. Now I wanna put this on the one that is after this piece here. And I wanna pull it. So it's snug, but again, not crazy tight. I'm going to take this straggler and I'm gonna put it inside because this is not yet finished. And then I'm going to take the straggler that is the starting also inside. And then I'm going to finish placing these loops on the rest of the loom going all the way around. Once you've gone all the way around and the stragglers are trapped on the inside, really give it a solid push. You've double stranded at this point. If you haven't double stranded, you may have double wrapped and go all the way and push it down. And now the beginning of the new color is ready. The straggler is inside. You can't even see it. And then you're going to begin to wrap using this new color. So this will be then the start of a brand new color. And you will notice that on the outside of this once you get moving will look completely seamless as if you never change nothing except for the color. So it's gonna be a really great way to be able to hide it in. So um, just continue to wrap around. Now that you've gone all the way around with the red, you're going to take both of the sets of strands that were over top of the pegs before and these are the last color and you're gonna push those over. And what you're doing is you're knitting this brim completely into position as you go. So you wanna grab everything. The first one is always relatively tight and then it loosens off after that. So the only thing left should be the red and you're gonna push down when you're ready. So just you can probably grab both sets of those and go at the same time if you wish. If not, just grab one set first, the top set here and push over and then grab the bottom set and etc. So please knit all the way around like this. So at this point I've just knit all the way around. I wanna go approximately about eight inches now from this point then before I start the heel. So it'll take me a little bit of time to get there and um, I'm going to leave this with you and when I come back I'm just gonna be turning on my music and just continue to go put on some Christmas music or something. And I just want to continue to go around and I will see you around the eight inch mark. If you would like to turn the heel sooner or later then you can just make it longer or shorter. It's up to you. The heels are not dependent on the length of what we're about to do. So please now do about eight inches and I'll see you back here and we'll start the heel in just a few minutes or just a few <laughs> seconds for now. <laughs> for me it might be an hour or so. So we're about to turn the heel and the heel turning on these little looms is actually pretty easy to think about and it actually gets a lot quicker um, the, the closer you get. So we're gonna start at the top here and then we're going to get more narrow and then we're gonna get to a certain point where it's a stopping point so we don't finish until there's one. There's just a few left and then what we do is we expand out. When you go to expand back out you're actually attaching this here to here and it's naturally happening so that you end up having the pucker of the heel. So it's actually really quite easy but the fact is is that we need to get ourselves started. And so you wanna leave the last seven untouched. Okay so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And this is where I want you to stop knitting at this moment. At this point here, I want you to grab a spare piece of strand, uh, string and I want you just to figure out a way, if you're not a crocheter, you might not have a hook, but um, get an idea of putting in a stitch marker. So just looping it through. And what we wanna do is we wanna lap or wrap it around that particular peg. So this will be the absolute maximum of the heel 
width is right here. And we're gonna cut this off later but I want you just to kinda of tie a knot and don't knit this into your project. We're gonna be cutting this off after we're done the heel. Now we have to go back to the other side. So we have seven on this side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now you want the next seven here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So right here I'm just gonna move this one up so I can see it. I wanna put another stitch marker there. So we're now going to go back to the instruction and now you can see that it's halfway across. So the heel is going to work its way through these set of 14 pegs but before we actually start to begin we have to finish off the first row and we already have it partially started. So we're gonna have to rewrap here and continue along. So this one is actually already knit. So we wanna start with the next one like we normally would and go all the way to the one that's marked. So let's officially begin. If we're working on the Christmas stocking we're going to start right here. It says start the heel color seventh before the end of the round which we are doing. Okay because we did we stopped seven early and you will not be circling the loom. So this is how you create a flat panel on a loom. That's the way that we're about to do it. So what we have to do is that we have to wrap the remaining to get ourselves to the 14th peg. So the seventh before and then the seventh after. So let's officially begin and then I'm gonna be working my way sequentially through these instructions. So we have to finish the next row. So because we stopped the seventh before I want to do this. Remember when we go to start, uh, uh, start uh, pulling off we always knit the last one. So that one's already done. So we wanna officially start in the next one and go to all the way to the one. It's the seventh one away and it's already been marked with the stitch marker. Hopefully you've done that. It will help you a lot. So once you get to the very last one you're going to wrap around and then that's it. Okay, so that's the one that's marked. So you're officially going to knit that and now you're going to go back through this and, and knit all the way back to the one that's marked here. So do that and this is gonna complete the next row and then we'll move on to the next row after that as we turn the heel. So as we begin right where we marked with the stitch marker that's where we are. So this is how you do a flat panel on a loom, on a round loom. So now you're just gonna go back in the opposite direction. You're still e-wrapping but now you're going to go in the other direction from what you've been doing. And you're gonna go in this round, or sorry, in this a row all the way then to where the stitch marker is marked. So it's technically the, the next 13. So you don't count that very first one that goes out when we started. Okay, so this will take you right to the end. Okay, so it's the one that's marked to make it easier for you. Then I want you to knit that one and then carry on and knit the rest and then we'll pick up and check this off on your list. Okay, so we're going to begin the next one and now we're only going to wrap the next 12. So right we're sitting here and so we're going to start and go one and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11 and 12. And do you notice that the next one is the one that's marked with the stitch marker but you're ending one early which is gonna start shaping us. So we're gonna knit that and then knit the rest and then come right back and then we'll check that off on our list. So let's see you back here in a second. Okay let's start and so we're sitting right here. So we're going to start in the next one and do only the next 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And you notice where the stitch marker is so you're not going all the way there which is perfect. That's the first one you're gonna knit and then knit the rest and be right back in just a moment. We'll carry on. So check number eleven uh, off on your list. Okay right where we're sitting start wrapping the next one and now we only wanna do the next ten. So one and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay and you notice where the stitch marker is so you're getting smaller which is good and knit that one plus all the rest and check off number ten off your list. Okay right where you're sitting and you have everything knit you're only gonna do the next nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. So knit that one 
and then check off number uh, and then all the rest and then check that off in your list. This is number nine. Let's continue then and we're going to start and we're gonna do eight and you're gonna notice that it's gonna be starting to grow on just this side of the loom only so you notice that it doesn't look in balance anymore because we're turning the heel. So starting in the next one you're only going to wrap the next eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Knit that one, all the rest and check off number eight off your list. Let's begin again and let's wrap in the other direction and we're only gonna do seven this time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So it's getting faster. Knit the last one and then all the rest and then check off number seven off of your list. Right where you're sitting, you're gonna go back in the other direction and wrap only six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Knit that last one and then the rest. Check off number six. Right where you're sitting, you wanna go back in the opposite direction and only wanna do five. So one, two, three, four, four, and five. Knit that last one and then check off number five. So knit the rest of them as well. And check off number five off your list and let's flip the page to page number two. Right where we're sitting, we're going to wrap only the next four. So one, two, three, and four. And this is the final decrease. So to knit that last one and then we'll discuss and now we're gonna start getting bigger. So this is the smallest part of the heel and I'll be right back in just a second. So right now we're at the point where the smallest, we only have four pegs act, that are actually in use and the heel has been officially turned here on this side. And you may, you can actually see it on the inside because it doesn't look even. So now we're going to get bigger and as we're picking it up, remember what I explained is that we were gonna get bigger and so as we get bigger, we're gonna be picking up the stitches here. So right when the ones that are kinda holding and waiting, as you're getting bigger, you're kinda picking those up naturally as you go. So let's officially then begin and start increasing on this part of the project. So let's begin the next row. To begin increasing, we're going to start and we're going to wrap the next five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And so you're gonna knit that last one. So the, this one was left behind a few, uh, like a few rows ago. So we're just gonna pick that up and throw that over which then brings it back into the fold and then you'll knit the rest. And so then you can check off number five off your list on the decrease, or sorry, on the increase part. And let's begin to do the next section in just a second. So let's begin again right where we're sitting. We're going to wrap the next six. So one, two, and three, four, five, and six. And so this one here was left behind a few rows ago. So that one comes back in the fold and then you're gonna pick up the remaining and then I'll meet you back in a second and check off number six for the increase and just, and I'll be right back in a second. Right where you're sitting, you want to wrap the next seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and knit and be right back and check off number seven off of your list. Right where you're sitting, you now wanna wrap the next eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and knit that eighth one and then the rest I'll be right back and check off number eight for your increase and I'll see you in a second. Right where you're sitting, you wanna wrap the next nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then knit that last one and then check off and then the rest and then check off number nine off of your list. Right where you're sitting, you want to wrap the next ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then knit that one and be right back in just a moment. Okay, right where you're sitting, you wanna wrap the next 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And then knit that one and all the rest and then check number eleven off of your list. Right where you're sitting, you wanna wrap the next twelve. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, and 12. Knit that last one plus all the rest and check off number 12 off of your list. So right where you're sitting you want to do the next 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And then knit that one and then be right back in just a second. And I do realize that it's past that. So it's just in case you leave a comment about that because we're pretty much almost done at this point. Okay, so now we're done. So now what we have to do is that we have to knit ourselves back to where we normally would have been is if we were restarting a new round. So just get yourself back to the starting point which would be here. And so then knit that plus on all the rest. And then we're going to reset and then start and do the instepped area in just a moment. So just knit these and I'll be right back in a second. So at this point the heel has been officially turned. You can see it on the back side here right there. Do you see how it's somewhat open? You can just use a strand of, uh, of the same color just to pull it more shut. It naturally does that. So if you think that you're screwing it up at any point that's just natural. So here you can get rid of these stitch markers. Now you're officially done those and we're going to begin the instep area for another four inches and the four inches will take you then uh, before we get to the toe area. So you can take these out and now because of where we just finished right here you can then go in your round circles again. So please knit now for another four inches and I will be right back in just a moment and we will show you how then to do the toe area in just a moment. So last I left you we were turning the heel and now I have my four inches done to this point. I want you now to write the numbers one through six and I want you to knit and wrap six more times and that's it. We're done. So I'm going to at the end of this tutorial show you how to finish this off so it gets more uh, tighter. So you'll notice it's nice and tight here. It's just right here in the heel. So let's uh, just do six more rounds now that you have your four inches done and then we'll seal that off and then I'll show you how to finish. So I'm going to start taking them off and unfortunately I already started so and I forgot to push start. So what I'm going to do is that I'm right here I'm going to scoop it up underneath. So what I what I have been doing um, is that I just scoop up underneath. So I cut about a 24 inch strand and then I took off my feeder and I'm going from this motion down and I'm making sure that when I push down the yarn tail is over top of the needle and that's preventing it from tangling. And as I pull I'm releasing these off of the loom like that. So it's scooping and then underneath like that. So just go all the way around. Sorry I didn't start right from the very beginning. You know me. I just I didn't push start. <laughs> so let's see at the end of this round. As I'm taking this off the loom I don't want to pull this shut until I'm at the end but because this is a stocking um, I also don't want to pull it shut right away either. Remember the heel area that I want to go back in. I think it might be easier to go in from this side of this before you push before you pull it all shut. So we're going to turn it inside out so we can access the heel area where it's been opened like that. And when I first started loom knitting I thought that was a mistake and it turns out it's just a natural thing and it's because the yarn is much thicker that those holes end up being that obvious. So just leave this completely open when we go to take it off the loom in just a few seconds from now. So I've officially just got everything onto the ending strand and I'm just going to take out the needle now and I'm just going to pull the loom off. So let's put that aside. So what we're going to do is that we are going to pull this shut but I wanna access this first. So I'm going to turn this inside out the whole thing so that you can see where those spaces are. Okay so we can clearly see that. So I'm going to grab some spare yarn then from the ball and I'm gonna do both sides. And just create a slip knot on the one side. It just becomes easier to secure that in. And where is my needle? Okay, so my needle is on the floor. So I'm just going to put this through the eye of the needle. Okay, the other side. So the slip knot's on the other side. And starting 
from where you start seeing it open. Just stay on the strands on the underside. So don't go through all, all the way through. Okay, so just grab the strands that you can see and just bridge them across and put that slip knot onto the needle. So when you go to pull it, that slip knot will grab onto itself and pull itself shut and it will lock like that. So working down, just going on one side to the other, just bridge it across. This is almost, this is actually probably called whip stitching. So you're not changing the shape, you're just pulling things closed. And when you do that, make sure when you pull it closed, it looks like it's being pulled closed as well. And when I, what I mean by that is just, if you're just grabbing onto strands and it doesn't look like it's pulling shut, then you may be grabbing onto the wrong one. So work your way to where that issue stops. And then you can re-examine this. So when I started today's tutorial, I knew this was gonna happen. Uh, but when I started loom knitting back in 2009, I was having this, I'm like, what am I doing wrong? And it's just because you have to abandon your loops to make this heal and those abandonment creates this space. And technically it's in your socks too, but because the yarn is so, or the material is so small, it's just you never see it. So when you're satisfied with pulling it shut, then you're just going to create a little tie. So just kind of look at it and see if it makes sense. And if you have to then just, you know, fi fix it, then you have to fix it, right? So in this case, I think I just have to go back and address that. So instead of just fastening off and restarting, I'm just gonna travel up through the stitch work I just did. Again, I just wanna stay on the inside of the sock or stocking. So I'm using the same strand and I just wanna kinda just pull this shut too. So I'm gonna do this for both sides so that I end up with a nice clean finish and then I want to just weave in my tail that I started with and to ultimately weave in your tails, see, done. So to ultimately weave in your tails, you just wanna tie a knot first. So just tie it onto each other and then you're gonna go back and forth through the fibers of this side of the project. So just glide it through, don't go too deep, don't go all the way through and glide it back and forth a total of three times. And you're gonna do that for your starting one as well. And then just trim it. So then here, because it's already a knot, you, this piece here, because it's already a knot, it's not gonna um, weasel its way out. So it's just going to just travel it underneath some stitch work. Just stay on this side of the project as well. And you just wanna drag it so the tail just kinda tucks into itself. And ultimately it's better to go back and forth three times but in this case for this application, once is probably good. So you can see that I sealed it and the other side I just have to do the same. And you can turn it inside, or uh, you can turn it the other way just to check your work if you care. So you can see I fixed that and you don't even notice on the outside that I've done that. So that's kind of neat, right? So now I want to put the strand back onto the needle here and I just wanna pinch it and now I wanna pull and this is going to close down the top of the, or the, actually the bottom of the, <laughs> the stocking if you think about it. Okay, so you're gonna pull. Now this uh, yarn can actually snap so you just wanna be careful. Just get it so that it does it nice and closed. So see where it's coming out? I wanna go completely the opposite side to that and go all the way across. And usually when I secure these things off, I like to do a crisscross. So there's, so it crosses over and then I'm gonna come across and go in the opposite direction here. Just stay within the stitch work itself. And now I wanna create a knot. This yarn is fabulous to be able to hide stuff too. So 
So just going to finish that knot off. And like I did on the back side is that back and forth three times is the best. So just going in just staying within the top section. So go once and then and I would go right across. You might as well. So then two and you've already tied the knot so it will hold. So two and then officially th three times is a charm. And that will conclude off your stocking. So trim that right to the project and shape your stocking and let's take a look at what we've done today. So here's our stocking. It's pretty cute, right? So you can see that you've turned your heel perfectly and you just wanna give it a good stretch. Let it stretch out a little bit and you can see the other side and you can see that we sealed on the inside here. So now what you can do is that you can just uh, use whatever color you want to, maybe the color white and uh, just secure it through the back section here so it's that you have something to dangle from the fireplace if you wish to do anything like that. The seam line because of the way that we did it is right on the very back of this so it's pretty much invisible and that's really quite awesome. So just put a, a, a strand of yarn there. So let me just demonstrate that quick in case somebody asks me. So you wanna be somewhat generous with it too. So just follow the seam line up and then just catch it and use whatever color you wish and just kinda pull it through and then just tie a little knot. You might wanna do better. If you do crochet maybe chain uh, maybe 20 and then uh, just um, then loop it and etc. Cut it short and then just move that so that the knot is on the inside of the project and then you have a little dangly thing just like that. So it's something that you can decide to do and that's really quite awesome. So this is the loom knitting stocking and this is a pattern by me but just re filmed here in 2020. Please enjoy and have a good, good day. Bye bye.